If you follow this channel for any length of time, you'll know that before the Steam Deck was huge news, I used to talk about a great variety of Linux newsy type stuff, and some may lament the fact that the Steam Deck has dominated this channel, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, the Steam Deck is one of the single largest developments regarding desktop Linux and consumer technology. So I'd say it's fair for me to continue to talk about it so much. But honestly, there have been some really big developments in the Linux realm uh, that I think we should talk about. So hi, I'm your friend and your guy and your favorite Linux pundit, Gardner. And we're going to talk about some Linux news. First up, let's talk about Ubuntu's new logo. Uh, I have tried to live with this logo for a bit. I've tried to be generous and I am a designer by trade. And I can tell you right now that I don't think this is very good. And far from me to be like overly critical here, but Ubuntu has a brand that is visually distinct. The Circle of Friends logo is iconic. And there was clear progression from where the brand started to where it was before they announced the new logo. But unless you were already familiar with the concept behind their previous logo, this new design is entirely meaningless. It's three circles spaced evenly along a ring. It's a nothing design that says nothing about the company, what they are, what they stand for. Uh, and it's one that has been used in rather conspicuous places, namely the share button in this ridiculous Windows 8 menu. Plus, I think it looks like a cock ring, and now you'll never be able to unsee that, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> and before we go on to the next story, why not hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, it really helps this show grow. And thanks. Next, let's talk about AMD's new FSR 2.0. FSR 2.0, or FidelityFX Super Resolution, is a new free and open source toolset from AMD made as an answer to NVIDIA's proprietary DLSS upscaling technology. And before I go any further, let me just pontificate for a minute on uh, why anyone in the Linux world would bother using NVIDIA technology anymore. I mean, AMD's over here making quality contributions to the free and open source world like their graphics stack. It's mostly open source and they work with the community. They have published their drivers in the Linux kernel. Meanwhile, NVIDIA publishes junk drivers with worse performance, missing features, and terrible support, and which is entirely proprietary and doesn't support modern display servers. Why do we use NVIDIA anything anymore? Anyway, according to AMD's press release, the new version of FSR has been built from the ground up, quote, using uh, cutting edge temporal algorithms to reconstruct fine geometric and texture detail in the upscaled image, along with high quality anti aliasing. Now, this delivers similar or better than native image quality using temporal data, and it includes high quality anti aliasing, higher image quality than FSR 1.0 at all quality presets and resolutions. It doesn't require dedicated machine learning hardware. It boosts frame rates in supported games across a wide range of products and platforms both AMD and select competitors. And I think that this is all rather impressive. Comparing a natively rendered 4K image to an FSR upscaled image, there's an ever so slight softening on high contrast parts of the upscaled image. But the quality and the detail of textures looks amazing. FSR 2.0 will be available in games which implement the technology and on select platforms. Here's hoping that global FSR 2.0 will be available on the Steam Deck sometime soon. And finally, I want to talk about some major Linux exploits that have been discovered. About two weeks ago, there was a major vulnerability that was publicly disclosed, which allowed read-only files on the file system to be overwritten. Now, this would allow local unprivileged attackers to give themselves root access to the system. However, this wouldn't allow a remote attacker to uh, execute this attack unless they already had some level of access to the machine. Essentially, the way the attack would work is someone with access would be able to use this exploit to overwrite a file, let's say a read-only or a privileged file. So something like etc slash passwd. So basically what they'd be able to do is create a malicious version of passwd and then overwrite the system level passwd file. They'd be able to turn off the root account password. So you'd be able to log in as root or sue into root uh, without needing to type in a password specified by the admin of the system. This is quite fascinating to me. Other proof of concepts included uh, creating a new version of the SU command that allowed privileged access without a password, and then overwriting the system's SU binary with this exploit. Now, the vulnerability was patched in kernel 5.16.11, 5.15.25, and 5.10.102. 
But then this week, another major privilege escalation vulnerability was publicly disclosed. Now, this vulnerability only affects kernel 5.4 through 5.6.10, but this is still a serious problem. Red Hat says, quote, this flaw allows a local attacker with a user account on the system to gain access to out of bounds memory, leading to a system crash or a privilege escalation threat. The issue stems from a kernel feature called NetFilter, which enables network operations like port translation, packet filtering, network address translation, and other things. Now, this has already been fixed in uh, modern Linux kernel versions, but this has been a heck of a year for Linux exploits. But it's also not unexpected, right? No software is perfect, and the more attention our favorite kernel gets, the more scrutiny it's going to receive. And because it's open source, it's actually easier to study, and it's easier to find vulnerabilities, but it's also easier to fix them. But I'd like to know what you think about this or any of the stories we talked about today. Let me know down in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to my YouTube members and my patrons. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this, so thanks. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support this show and help it grow, you can join the 100 plus other Linux warriors over on Patreon or as YouTube members with the links below. That's going to do it for now though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.